How's it going, everybody? Happy Halloween. Uh, thanks for catching another episode of The More You Mo. I am, of course, Jay, and today we're gonna be coming through with our Halloween Domination episode. So we're gonna go through and change out our blade on our Ryobi Edger, as well as put it back on our stripe kit, and let's get some uh, Halloween stripes going for the neighborhood kids. And, uh, well, of course, you know, every other dad that, you know, feel like they're gonna get a little dominated this Halloween. And with this Ryobi Edger, uh, the blade, We'll need to change out so you can see it got to the wear points and uh it's definitely due so first thing you want to do is these ryobi edgers you flip it over you can see that there is a notch in the actual part that rotates right there this guy and if you stick a screwdriver in this slot you can lock it in and you can actually remove the blade so let's go ahead and do that so this is the ryobi expanded edger so um after you use it for a couple seasons, or maybe a season, the uh, blades when you get changed out. They have these little wear indicators with these holes, and you can see that it's getting to that point where now I'm gonna change this out. So uh, I went down to my local Home Depot, and I got a replacement. This is the uh, blade. So it's different than the blade that came on there originally. Originally it was just a square blade. This one has these teeth on it, at least from what I can remember. If I remember correctly, I think it cost me, yeah, it's cost me about $16 after taxes, and it's a direct replacement for the Ryobi. So on here you can see where it says replace. If you get a little close, then you'll be able to see it. So that's your replace, uh, your wear marker. See a random blue hand coming here with a glove? That's me. Um, I got a burn on my hand. I got to keep it protected. So uh, you're going to see the glove periodically throughout the video today. So uh, bear with me, I'm trying to get you guys some content in the meantime. Let's go ahead and uh, change out this blade. So what we're going to do, like I said, find your notch that matches from where it rotates to where it'll lock in. You can stick a screwdriver in here, just like so, and it holds it in place. After you have that locked in, you can go ahead and grab your socket. To take off your blade, you're going to need a 19 millimeter socket and a socket wrench. When you break it loose, it's opposite of righty tighty lefty loosey. So it's actually lefty tighty righty loosey. So don't forget that. Um, don't pull too hard on the opposite direction. You can break something. Uh, just take your time and it'll it'll come off. So as you can see, screwdriver is holding on inside the notch. Got the socket on here and I'm removing the old blade. After you get your locking nut off, go ahead and pull off your whatever this thing is called. <laughs> and then take off your blade. Now the blade's off. Toss that thing in the trash. Now we got our new blade. Go ahead and put it on where the old blade was. I'm gonna turn a little bit, line it up on the chuck. Take your little weird washer thing, put that back on there. And then go ahead and tighten down your nut that you have. And remember, it's lefty tighty righty loosey on this particular instance. Grab our socket in the opposite direction and tighten it down. Alright, and that, my friends, is how you go ahead and replace your edger blade. So now let's go ahead and put this thing in use and uh, trim up this yard. So as I'm sure you've probably seen, the one main gripe I have about that Ryobi system is that if it gets too clogged up, it'll just turn off. You have to pull the battery out to restart it. Um, it's not necessarily like a, a deal breaker. But it's a little bit annoying. Um, I don't know if it's because there's not enough power for the battery, but once that the housing over the uh, blade gets uh, clogged up with dirt, it doesn't want to spin anymore. So, I mean, I did also water not too long ago, so sure that doesn't really help with the issue but um let's keep going so i know you guys have seen this in the videos but uh, i've never formally introduced my stripe kit that i have so this is a diy stripe kit that i made um, i've seen a couple different ideas off of youtube and on the internet of different types of stripe kits and i kind of combined a couple different ones that i like so this is kind of going off the big league roller style um, a lot of the stuff i was able to source um, as spare parts that I have. Uh, this is made out of three inch PVC filled with sand and it has 
has end caps on it. Also, this right here is Unistrut. Uh, the axle for the uh, roller itself is all thread. And I have a couple eye bolts going through with locking lockers in order to uh, keep everything together. So this I use on my Toro 21 inch. It's a little bit small for the Time Master, but it fits right in between the wheels and it gives me a pretty good stripe. So I just took it off my old uh, recycler and put it onto my Time Master. If anybody wants an actual full build of how I did this, so you can do it on your own, um, just say so in the comments. This probably cost me, if you, were to, if you were to go out and buy all the parts and put it together, it probably costs you 50 bucks. Let's go ahead and get this thing back onto the Time Master and let's get to mowing. So I use these uh, quick release pins in order to take mine off and on. It's a little bit long, but it doesn't get in the way of the back of the mower. It also doesn't impede the bagging anyway. It's just a little bit longer. I could cut it down, maybe a little bit shorter, but as it is, it's okay for now. I did have a system where I was using a bolt, washers, and uh, lock nuts, but I can't find my lock nut for this, go figure. So we're just gonna go ahead and attach it the way we, best way we know how, and We'll go ahead and use the uh, quick release option. So I have a washer that goes through the pivot area. I have another washer that goes on the inside and then another washer. So I stack my washers up. Well, we have these on, so I put that on there. So there's, there's not much play side to side once this is actually all together. It actually stays in pretty well. So, I mean, it looks like it has a lot of slack in it, but it really doesn't move too much. It's more extra material that I really don't need. So sorry for the dirty mower, but I haven't cleaned this thing once in, uh, I think about two years now. So typically I would prefer to bag this up, but as I said, got an issue with my thumb, got burnt. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and just mulch this all into the, uh, back into the grass. Ideally, you're gonna wanna go ahead and bag it for the first couple of mows, but I don't have that option, so I'll work with what I got. Front yard mow is complete. There was some parts that are still kind of wet. I uh, kind of slipped. I'll show you where that happened. Right over here, I uh, kicked up a little bit of, made a little bit of mud right there. This part isn't growing in as I was kind of hoping it would. So uh, hopefully the spring, after temperatures come up a little bit, the uh, seeds that are left in here will germinate and come back up as a uh, new grass to fill this in. But uh, let's go ahead and clean off this driveway.
all done with the mowing and the leaf blowing of the driveway as well as the edging. I think it turned out pretty good. The only thing I probably would have wished would have been a little cleaner was the, the mow itself. So like I said, couldn't really use a bag today. Bad just in my hand. I mean, it don't look bad. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, you can still see the debris inside the yard. It's okay, I'll be mowing it again in the next couple days anyway. So here's kind of how the stripes look. Um, they came out pretty clean. They all erased from when I did the overseed, so I didn't burn them in. As I said, this is still new baby grass and you don't want to go over multiple times. I mean, the ground is still wet. This is how it turned out. I think it looks pretty solid. The camera doesn't do it justice, of course, it never does. It's kind of hard to see with the lighting situation that we have now. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I think the, the grass is going to do very well over the winter. So again, I want to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode. Uh, this is a good Halloween domination episode. Make sure you get your edges right. Make sure you get your stripes looking good. Make sure you get your yard looking clean. And uh, you'll be the talk of your whole neighborhood. As I said, today is Halloween. I'm trying to get this taken care of before all my trigger treaters come. I had a long day at work today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video for today. I'm only doing the front yard, backyard. I'll take care of probably tomorrow, but this is the most important part right now. I'm kind of running low on time, so. Here's a quick rundown of our uh, Halloween decorations. I don't know if any of you care about it, but these are a couple of pumpkins we had carved. That's uh, my Frankenstein. He lights up with a strobe inside. <clears throat> There's our mascot. His eyes turn red at night. We got our spider web. We got Jack and Sally. We got some, uh, we got some floodlights over here to light up orange. I got orange lights on the house. But also black lights. One of the new items we got are these guys right here. They're uh, posable hands. You make them do whatever, make them make a fist. Yeah, pretty cool. That's gonna do it for today. My daughter's getting off the bus. And I uh, hope you guys have a great Halloween. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Have a good night. Stay safe, guys.